making small block Chevys great again. But in a small block Chevy, this Lieutenant Dan. Generation five small block. Show them, show them your nice shaft. Oh, yes, of course. Um, Dr. Tunamal, NK Performance. Thank you for giving us this nice shaft. <laughs> I really, I appreciate that. We put that in there, and in fairness, it is a nice shaft. It's, it's actually. But is it a nice big shaft? It's That's a pretty, nice I mean, the box was, you know, of a darker color. I mean, the lift would indicate a large shaft. Um, so here's what we're working with. We got the, the, the cam sheet here. Now the duration isn't crazy. We're talking 237, 248, but the um, the lift is pretty good. We got 648, 639. So we're rocking some lift on that deal. So this should be a pretty pretty spicy meatball. So this engine is a little different bird. This engine's quite the, a bit of a different. This bird. ain't your standard LS. This no, this is not a standard LS deal of any kind. Um. So this is actually a 2019 5.3. This is from a Chevy truck, whatever. So this is called an LT. Um, some key differences in these, uh, the way the covers are on them and stuff is a little bit different. Um, the oil pump style, they redid a bunch of stuff in the oil pan, stuff like that. Um, also, heads, you've got a factory upgrade from an 11 millimeter stud to a 12 millimeter stud. So guys always used to put half inch head studs in the LS, <laughs> bind them down. Well, this does that, does that fact, basically. So a little now, more difference than that in the head though. So now your head torques at 115 foot pounds. Also the head's wildly different than an LS. So if you come on down, we've got, now this is a small bore. So this this is the 5.3 is the 3780 bore. No. These heads so are these, originally are, this is a direct injected Yeah, so this engine. is direct injected. So originally we have an injector that comes through here. Your injector goes there, your rail bolts right here, comes right through here and it pokes out right here and shoots fuel right into your factory piston, which has a cup like a diesel. So we've uh, we welded all that up, reshaped the chambers, uh, milled the heads. Now this runs a 193 valve and a 159 exhaust. It's so that's nice, nice factory seats. Huh? So that is, yeah, they're really nice material. So that I've cut the seats, I've done the valve job on that. A little bit of just massage work, removing a couple small casting imperfections out of the heads and stuff like that. But really, most of the work has been done here in the in the bowl. And those things have a wild valve angle. Uh, yeah. So these are a 12 degree head instead of a 15 on the LS, and they're also canted. So if you look, both valves are going to open towards the center of the bore. Yeah. You can see it a little bit looking at your, your rocker pedestals and stuff like that. You see how they're all tilted over towards each other. And these things have an extremely raised runner too. And yeah, so that runner is like inches off the deck. Yeah, that's higher than your LSX heads, eh? Oh, but my LS7 heads? They're, that's yeah. higher than my LS7 heads tenfold. My LS7 head, the top of the port might be here. Yeah. It's this is a a unit. This is pro stock on a stock block. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like this is mint. Yeah, they're pretty impressive, actually. So for a factory these head. heads, I know guys on the six two, which the six two uses a two sixteen valve. There's guys at four hundred CFM with a basic CNC port job and like. You don't have one of the factory pistons here anymore, huh? I don't anymore. So what we've done, which we're converting this one to be fully uh, port injection, no longer any direct injection, and custom pistons were going to be like $2,200 or whatever. So what we did is we bought some Summit Pro LS. This is like a 5.3 piston for a, for a 6 and an 8th rod. So we bought the 6 and 8th rods and the pistons. I think it was like a thousand bucks. Um, so then the thing with the LT is your intake and exhaust valve have swapped places now. So if we wanted to bolt Cleveland heads onto this one, we could do it. Absolutely. The valve. Absolutely. The valve spacing is correct. It almost fits perfectly. Green Mountain Gearheads did it, and they slotted the bolt holes on the LT heads and put them on the Cleveland base. Oh, they oh they put okay. And the, and the the water ports basically work. I, I have had yeah. both side by side yeah. the LT and the Cleveland, and, and I mean it is almost interchangeable. So that is, I would say, the LS is like the Windsor. Yeah. And these are like the Cleveland because <laughs> the heads are like just killing. Yeah. 
Um, so you had to fly cut these. So we had to fly cut these because now this used to be our intake valve. Now yeah. this is our intake valve. Yeah. So I fly cut these. The good part about this is if you look at the forging from the bottom, these are a symmetrical eyebrow piston. Yeah. They're so really, really, they were just under all kinds of meat stock. So we have plenty of room to have two large valve reliefs. Yeah. And um, then you had to chamfer these to fit. And then we also had to chamfer these so they would clear the combustion chambers. So this is actually a small dome that was just what was in stock when we ordered, and there's no reason to not have as much compression as possible. So we went ahead and we just chamfered around that dome. I think a flat top we wouldn't have to touch, but uh, we just chamfered that dome. And we're gonna we're gonna get the rest of the pistons and rods in this thing. I'm gonna recheck it with clay and turn the motor over. Mm -hmm and make sure we don't have something new that's arisen now that we've milled the heads and mm -hmm. welded up the the uh, injection ports and stuff like that. So what? why not just stay direct injection? Well, that's another huge issue, which is nobody sells really great performance direct injection parts. Well, they do, but they're really good for about 800 horse and then you're done. And what you just can't get fuel system enough to run it. Fuel system enough to run it, and it's really expensive. The Holly to run this engine with direct injections around $4,000 which is like out of the budget for this project. So this is way cheaper to do it this way so and this, you can get... And yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we had to do some custom machining on the pistons, but I mean, this is something any good machine shop should be able to do without issue, you know what I mean? Mm. So we did this, we got these rods and pistons balanced to that crankshaft. Um, we're gonna go through, I'm gonna, we're gonna check this all out after. The only thing you do have to keep in mind is you do need to definitely check all our clearances after because we are putting an angle, you know, the valve is coming in at an angle mm -hmm. like this to the piston. So piston to valve clearance is going to be... we got to make sure with this, with this cam and everything With this good. cam and yeah. everything we're good, which is mm -hmm. normal for almost all builds. But yeah. still, we got to go ahead and do that. Um, you almost should maybe do that before you put too many pistons in. Well, I, we're not going to change too much on the pistons, I don't think. And if we do, we can pop them out pretty quick. Yeah. So I, I don't believe there's at all an issue because the, the LTs have a big dome on them. And typically, the, the exhaust valve relief isn't even into the piston itself. Yeah, I know. They and have a... Would, so, th this can that we're running would clear stock LT valve. They have a space. really funky looking piston. Yeah, they do. It's piston almost piston. like a dual pocket diesel piston. Yeah, it's got, like, it's... it's got like a diesel combustion chamber or like a fuel combustion chamber here. And then it's got like a dome that goes around it. And yeah. it's very strange. Yeah, it's... it's... Weird. So now, but they're a really good engine. I mean, the rods are like an I beam version of this stock. Like they're better than a Gen Four rod a little bit, and they're yeah. they're already, I believe, six and one eight. They're a nine twenty seven pin. So the Gen Four went up to that bigger nine forty three pin, which is weird and doesn't work with anything else. Mm -hmm. So then, like this has your, you know, this is like a proper aftermarket rod, but it stock these had a proper length rod with a proper pin, and, and just a lot of a lot of upgrades. So this is a pretty great engine. I'm uh, I'm curious to see. This is a 5.3. That cam's not huge. I bet you this motor will still make over 500 on motor. We're going to make one Ford Tough with Chevy stuff. Yep. Yeah, and then it's going in the, the Fairmont. we got to do... He has another engine we're going to put in there to mock up and weld up the turbo kit and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're not dirtying this Did one. you say turbo kit? I did say turbo kit. Oh, You're welcome okay. to join in that venture. All you yes, girls. Please. All you girls love your turbos. Hey, call me. Uh, it's a big one, too. Percy's got the big one. He bought one? You got yeah. a single? He has a single. It's a 92 millimeter billet T6. How unit. long will that take to spool? Probably not that bad. You know. just shoot nitrous into it? No, we got a dome piston 5.3 here. He's going <laughs> and then mm. And then he's going to go. He'll be making a sandwich. I'll let go of my nitrous button. And... I mean, it'll be golden. Yeah. All I'm saying is call me up when they're golden. Oh, we're uh, definitely, we're going to have a pretty sweet setup. Yeah, Percy fancies himself a welder, too, oh, so. Yeah, it's true, I forgot. You all, you, you all will have. <laughs> no, you guys, no, seriously. like You all have to get into a welder pissing contest. No, there. I was talking to him about it, and he was like, yeah, that'd be great. And then we can all relieve each other when we get sick of that. Oh, that's the problem. Do I'm ignorant. I'll just oh, sit there all day. And that might be perfect. <laughs> I'm going to be busy fitting because I don't know how much of a fitter either of these guys are. We know how much of a fitter that yeah, guy is. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, we're going to get into that. But, but we got to get this deal done first. So, he bought a, also higher end for it. So, we got the same higher end as on your engine? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same, same deal. So, uh, um, should be a really sweet rig, honestly. Wow. I mean, peep the $1,000 timing cover. I mean, I know. This timing cover is like jewelry. 
it, it's pretty sweet. I mean, I mean, he is French, right? I yeah. mean, <laughs> I can't blame him though. That's a that's a unit. I could have bought a lot of shit with a thousand dollars besides the timing cover. Yeah, but we didn't know how much we were going to need it. In retrospect, we could have made some block off plates for a stock cover and kind of done the stock cover deal. And, and valve covers we still have to figure out too because they're not the same as the LS and it has this perimeter bolt pattern. And oh, the yeah. stock covers are terrible. Why I mean, we, uh, make some? I, we're, we're kind of, we were talking about Actually, that. I was just watching uh, Dr. Tunamal's car there at, uh, or not his car, but the car he tunes at, yeah, uh, yeah. at Lights Out. Yeah. It's got a perimeter bolt valve cover on it. Yeah. On the LS. I think yeah. it'd be a good time to make our own. Some, some of the original, the LS ones had it in the, like the 97. Well, that one is stuff. not. That, no, that's... no, no, that one's an aftermarket head deal. I don't know if that car's an LT also or. Uh, it's an LS base, they say. Yeah. And then what's those same heads that, uh, that Tommy's got in his new engine there? Uh, the mass heads. Oh, yeah, the mass heads. But they're a perimeter valve cover. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So we got to, that's something we're going to have to figure out. Because I see one company was making them, but they're like $900 in their bill. And you can't use the factory ones? Oh, we can use them. But holy shit. They are ugly. They're uh, u Well, it's an LS, dude. They're all ugly. No, this thing would look really good with some like nice covers on Did it. You're saying 900 Yeah, Yeah, they're like $900 for golf. Well, dude, it's $1,000 no, no. for a timing cover. Yeah, this, now, now, this, this now is I will high. say, now I will say, if you put the valve covers on that match the timing cover, it would be a ballin' unit. This is how to spend money. Like, you know. Yeah, well, for nine hundred dollars, I hope they include the extra aluminum shavings in the box. I mean, that, that's a lot of. Yeah, you want to get your yeah. whole piece of billet. All I like day is Mama ain't getting an engagement ring this year. <laughs> no. If he's doing that, <laughs> no. so I don't uh, know. We were talking about that, and then we're gonna build some uh, some plates. I think to do the water pump stuff, which is the same as LS actually by the looks of it. You can do like a remote pump, you uh, mean, or what? Yeah, we're gonna do a remote pump, so we might build uh, some plates, mm. and then we can do aluminum tubing. And we'll we'll tube it over because we're gonna have hot side stuff here and everything like that. So we'll wait till it's in the car, mm. but we're gonna laser cut those plates and have all that ready, so we can actually make our our water housings, mm. you know, right off the get go. Yeah. And then we can route that wherever we want. We'll weld like sixteen AN bungs on it and run, you know, AN. Yeah. And everything yeah. Like That'd be that. cool. So it'll be it'll actually be a really nice setup and properly done. And then what do you got for pan or anything? You got the uh, the pan's a, a holly swap pan. Holly it's swap just, pan. It's like a low profile swap pan. Yeah. Um. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be pretty sweet. We gotta figure out where we're gonna put our turbo drains in the pan and stuff. Um. So I'm gonna. So what the hell? Them. This is cam stuff or what? This yeah. Is exactly. Cam so this is for your factory. The oil pump has a sensor on it mm -hmm. in the Gen Five that. It's, a, it's an electric bypass. It's like an extra electric bypass that so doesn't make as much pressure. Okay. Which I really wish they would have deleted that. So what are you going to do about that on this thing? So I'll put the grommet and the stuff in the hole, but we're not going to use that. Whenever they default, they default to high pressure. So like if your electronics stop working on your oil pump, they make too much oil pressure. And then blow the oil filter off? And... No, 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 no. Like, like stock, they go from making like 50 pounds to making like 75 pounds. Okay. So it's, it's really just more for like cold start. Because we're not going to have a Scott situation where we're making 150 pounds of oil pressure. We're not supposed to. Now we are deleting, you know, the DOD and stuff like that. So it's definitely going to make a lot more. Mm. But I don't believe that to be an issue. And then we're going to have to transfer in the timing sensor. I Unfortunately, I was buying Gen 4 sensors for this motor, hoping we could put the older crank sensor and the older cam sensor in it and have it just work so it would plug into like a 905 Holly harness. But I guess we're going to have to. I have a whole harness for this. We'll have to just splice a few wires to so run, regular, to run but, the but, stock sensor. But your regular Holly system is going to... Uh, the regular Holly system would fit like the Gen 4 motor. Um, so yeah, I, but I mean, I, like it's going to work on that newer sensor, even though it's a different plug. Oh, it's going to yeah, read absolutely. it. Absolutely. We, yeah. just need to, we just need to mm -hmm. swap it. And I think we might even be able to choose the other sensor through the drop down. It's just not going to be the harness for the thing. Because mm. the harness for the LT comes with the direct mm. injection. It's like four. It's, it's insane. Yeah. It's not purchasable no. by a normal human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to do the Gen 4 computer. Actually, we'll probably try and fire it up with my Holly computer. I think I've got a starter for this. We have the old, fly, or old flex plate. I wouldn't mind firing this whole deal up on, you know, my computer. And just, you know... Proof of concept it right here in the garage, you know, have it right. Mm. So, oh, we're good to go and and that'd be sweet. So well, what a rip tater chip. Yeah. So yeah, we're uh, I'm gonna keep putting these pistons in, then we can do a clay check with the heads. Yeah. And you got push rods and everything? 
I do. I have stocks now. Oh yeah. I have all stocks. So you have to get some better ones. We probably well, we'll probably I'm gonna measure because again this mm. is a bolt down the rocker deal. So we're gonna have to yeah yeah we're yeah. gonna have to measure for push rods because you know we have planed the heads. We've done mm. a valve job. So I would anticipate... You didn't cut the heads very much, did you? I cut 10 thou off the heads. Yeah. The valve job, I anticipate, is going to change it more than anything else. So we're going to need to measure and order up the push rods. Um, so that can also be on the agenda. Um, for right now, he doesn't have the spring. Springs are supposed to be in Monday. Or yeah, you can't Saturday. put heads on when permanent. Saturday. So I can't... Yeah, no. So I can measure... Which could stick them up there enough to just play Absolutely. check it. Absolutely. I want to clay check. I want to... Um, we can measure for, for push rods. Mm -hmm. We can rig something in there to get the valves moving. Yeah. We can move the valves. We can check pistons valve clearance. We can make sure we're all good to go. And then we'll go. It's three ahead. weeks from running though. I'd say a week from running. Oh yeah? Yeah. I mean, short of, short yeah. of exhaust and stuff like that, you know? Um, but no, I really putting those heads together is going to be very quick. All the machine work's done. Like, they're ready to assemble. Valves are ground. Everything's ready to rock. Uh, I have to grind, I think, eight valves still or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but, yeah, everything's ready. Like, the guides are cleaned, everything like that. We just got to really squeaky clean the heads quick and assemble them and let her rip. So, no, this thing, today, if the bottom end's done, we're waiting on lifters and trays, too, which is... Just stock trays? Stock trays, stock lifters. Mm -hmm. Awesome. DOD to leave stuff. Yeah. It works fine. Cheap. Plastic lifter trays don't impress me much. They don't impress me much either, but they work. So, pretty, could be pretty budget in the future doing this again. I mean, having a rod piston 5.3, you're not going to have, you'll have more money in a Gen 5 for mm. sure. But if you can do your own stuff, like, I mean, that that fuel injector delete is definitely expensive. You know, yeah. If you have access... Well, if you if you send those heads out and send the pistons out and do all that shit, you're going to have some money in it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. like, that's... I mean, or you throw the stock injectors back in the holes and you just run the thing with the injector yeah. block in the holes yeah. and you call it good. He didn't want it to be ugly. I don't blame him. That's definitely more efficient. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, no, we've done it right, but uh, kind of budget, too. Cool. All right.